Hi, it's Lynn Liaz, and I have an important news update for you regarding yesterday's events and how these things that happened yesterday, now more happened yesterday than just the New York Stock Exchange um, having some uh, alleged technical glitch. There were a, a slew of other events that happened I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to show you those news links as well to back up what Jim Baker is saying in this letter. Now, here's what he says. Could this be the beginning of a complete world collapse? A day of chaos on Wall Street today, as this is being written, the New York Stock Exchange had been closed for over four hours. The Greek government is scrambling to fix their financial disaster and headlines are screaming out that the real crisis in the financial news is that China is headed for a crash, much like what happened to us in 1929. As I have watched the news today, riveted by what is happening all over the country, all I could do was sit and connect the dots. Could the world's financial system be taking the first major step towards a complete collapse? Now, most all of you, if you've been watching my videos as well as other people who are reporting the same on YouTube and elsewhere, you know that many things are being prophesied for this coming September. Jonathan Kahn has been speaking out about a collapse coming. The collapse reaches its peak at the end of September 2008 with what becomes the greatest single day crash in Wall Street history. That morning in the New York Stock Exchange, the opening bell refuses to sound. Even Wall Street takes it as an omen. The stock market crashes over 700 points. On what date did the greatest crash in Wall Street history take place? It is September 29th, 2008. But the ancient biblical calendar holds a different name. The greatest stock market collapse in world history takes place on the 29th day of Elul, the exact day appointed from ancient times for the nullifying of the financial realm, the wiping out of financial accounts. Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, the sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The judgment that specifically strikes the nation's economic and financial realm. The two greatest collapses in stock market history up to those dates each took place on the same exact day on the ancient biblical calendar and they just happen to each take place on the precise biblical day that's specifically ordained to touch the nation's financial realm and to wipe clean its financial accounts from ancient times, the day of financial nullifying. And it's not only Elul 29, but it can only be one Elul 29 in seven years that can constitute the day of the Shemitah, the day of nullification. So on which Elul 29, did the greatest stock market collapse take place in the year 2008? It happened on the once in seven years Elul 29, the exact one that constitutes the day of the Shemitah and the greatest crash of 2001. When did it take place? It happened on the once in seven years Elul 29 that also constituted the Bible's day of the Shemitah. So when all across the world, Observant Jews are symbolically canceling out their debts to each other. The greatest wiping out of financial accounts in history is taking place on Wall Street and sweeping across the globe. According to the ancient mystery, the financial nullification has to take place seven years apart from the one before or after. So the two greatest financial nullifications in Wall Street history up to their dates take place seven years apart not only on Elul 29, but seven years apart, seven exact biblical years apart, down to the exact season, the exact month, the exact date, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, the exact closing bell. No human hand in the world could have orchestrated such a thing. It required the working together of every financial transaction and interaction in the world. It even required that 9-11 had to have happened exactly when it did, as it was 9-11 that caused Wall Street to collapse in 2001 on the exact 
ancient appointed day. Hey, many people have been speaking about a coming collapse as well as other catastrophes. We have Jade Helm, uh, the training for martial law and so forth. Okay, just all sorts of stuff. So let's go on with Jim's letter here. This morning, United Airlines had to suspend and cancel flights all over the country because of a computer's glitch. Again, this was yesterday that these things took place, but I am sharing this letter with you today that Jim apparently wrote yesterday. So again, this morning, United Airlines had to suspend and cancel flights all over the country because of a computer glitch. The Wall Street Journal's website went down because of a computer glitch. All of these computer glitches, and I have a hard time not connecting them together. And if these incidents are related, then it had to be by something evil. There is massive flooding all over the country and power outages occurring because of them. I'm also going to show you links, some of the links about some of those places, not all of them. We are also suffering from drought and threats of disease that are wiping out some of our food supply. We know there's a major drought out in California. The warning signs are continuing to flash brighter. Last night, I received a phone call from a recent prophetic guest and wonderful friend, John Kilpatrick. He told me that the next 90 days will be more important than the last 54 years of your ministry altogether. He went on to warn me, do not be distracted as the next months are crucial. Your voice must be diligent and clear in the next 90 days. Time after time, our prophetic guests have told us all that we need to be preparing now. It is time to get ready for what is to come. John Shorey, Rick Joyner, Joel Richardson, Carl Gallups, and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn are among those that have just recently been warning the world of what is to come. I cannot help but think of their words as this day unfolds. We will see more of these days of uncertainty. We will see more chaos. All right. We have, I believe, clip number two, which is the mystery of the seventh Shemitah. Let's just talk because this is also, this cycle is starting shortly. It's the first time in 2,000 years that the land is being restored to the Jewish people. The year following the Shemitah was September 1917 to September 1918. The Balfour Declaration takes place in November 1917. Thus, the land is restored to the Jewish people in the year following the Shemitah corresponding to the Jubilee. It's a prophetic Jubilee. And according to the mystery, the Jewish people now would return home to the land they had lost, to their father's possession, to their ancestral homeland. Everyone shall return to their possession. The mystery of the Jubilee concerns the seventh Shemitah. So what happens if we move forward in time from the Shemitah of 1917, 49 years to come to the seventh Shemitah? What is the seventh Shemitah? It brings us to the Shemitah of September 1965 to September 1966. The year following the Shemitah, would begin September 1966 and end September 1967. Did anything significant take place within that year and within those dates? Any event of restoration? The answer is yes. According to Bible prophecy, the Jewish people have to be restored not only to their homeland, but also to their ancient holy city of Jerusalem. In the midst of the Six-Day War, Israeli soldiers enter the Lion's Gate of the biblical city of Jerusalem. Through gunfire, they make their way to the holiest site in Judaism, the Western Wall. There they weep. And after 2,000 years, the Jewish people are restored to their ancient capital, Jerusalem. It happens on June 7, 1967 within the parameters of the year ending in September 1967, the year following the seventh Shemitah, the Jubilee. The seventh Shemitah had ushered in the second restoration of the land. According to the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, the Jewish people had returned to what they lost 2,000 years before, Jerusalem. 
They had regained their long lost possession and returned to their ancestral home. The two great restorations of the land each happened according to the mystery. The Bible ordains that in the year of the Jubilee, the shofar, the ram's horn, is to be sounded. The first thing that happens after the soldiers reached the Temple Mount in 1967 is that the ram's horn is sounded from the Temple Mount, the sound of the Jubilee. The man who sounds it is Rabbi Shlomo Goren. Rabbi Goren was born in the year 1917, the time of the other restoration. When he sounds the shofar, he is 50 years old, the number of the Jubilee. The mystery of the Shemitah lies behind the two great end time restorations of Israel's lands. Now the pattern and cycle does not have to continue, but if it did, what would be the seventh Shemitah from the last restoration? The seventh Shemitah begins September 2014, goes to September 2015. The year following the seventh Shemitah is that of September 2015 to September 2016. While the cycle doesn't have to continue and nothing significant has to take place, in the last two occurrences, it has meant war in the Middle East, war in the land of Israel, and a war resulting in a prophetic restoration. According to Joe Grano, chairman and CEO of Centurion Holdings LLC and former chairman of Homeland Security Advisory Council, the two places America is most vulnerable is our financial systems and our energy grid. And the biggest warning light is that our enemies not only can shut down our financial system, but also our grid. So think about this with yesterday's events. Look how easy it was for something to happen to all these different things. The New York Stock Exchange, um, the United Airlines, and all of these places that were experiencing power outages. Okay, so how easy would it be for the grid to go down, even if just for a few hours? Just imagine how vulnerable we are. Now, here is some of the news links I told you I would share right here. Power outages Tuesday night leave residents in the dark. This is from the Coloradian news. Okay. Then we have here Fox, Carolina, Newberry County experiencing widespread power outages. Okay. BBC News yesterday, United Airlines jets grounded by computer glitch. Okay. And this is from CDN News. All trading halted on New York Stock Exchange floor. WSJ.com down. Okay, right here. The crash in China continues and is engulfing Hong Kong. I'm just sharing some of these headlines with you so you can see for yourself. ABC News just the other day. China calls for new global currency. Okay, right here, Reuters, hit by drought and seawater, Bangkok tap water may run out in a month. Okay, we know we have the drought going on in California. This is going on all over the place. Now, here's something else interesting that I want to share with you. This picture here, it went viral. A photographer captures a rare photo indeed of a crow riding on the back of a bald eagle. Now, I have not heard anything personally prophetic about this until yesterday when an email was sent to me. Now, Mina Lee Gribben, who had a ton of visions and prophecies regarding end times events, she was on the Rick Wiles True News show recently, and I did some posts that contained those videos. She has some real words from God, very prophetic. Anyhow, yesterday I received an email with her thoughts on this photo and why it went viral. There's a reason it went viral. Yes, it's a rare photo and it's cool to see this, okay? But there's also some prophetic implications to it. Let me show you what she said. Regarding the crow hitching a ride on the back of an eagle. So several people have asked me, what are my thoughts regarding the snapshot of a crow riding the back of a bald eagle? I actually believe that there is a great significance in what was caught on camera. 
To the naked eye, it was quite a scene, but is there something more symbolic or even spiritual about what happened? I believe the answer is yes. First, let's look at the symbolism of a crow. A crow is associated with cunningness, trickery, and death. The crow is portrayed in many horror movies as demonic, uh, demonic changelings, vampires, or even Satan himself. In the movie The Omen, the crow was portrayed with the young boy Damien, who was born to be the Antichrist. On the other hand, eagles represent the spirit of prophecy, wisdom, and even in some instances, Christ. But in this case, it represents America. Yes, you know that America is symbolized by the bald eagle. Okay, and it happened to be a bald eagle in that photo. Because America's symbol is not just the eagle, but especially, or specifically rather, the bald eagle. The fact that someone was able to catch this transpiring photo, put it on the internet, and then the fact that it's going viral was a sign to America that Satan has mounted his throne upon this country or nation. Just as I shared in my video the dream of the Constitution being changed, I said that it would seal the fate of this nation. The judgment has been set, saints. Things are about to drastically change, and they already have. And the life that we have known will never be the same. The American dream is over. Shalom. Shalom. Mina Lee Greben, Faithful Walk Healing Ministries. Yes, everyone, I have to agree with her. The American dream, as we once knew, is over. Things are happening. I do believe. I mean, I have not been given a prophecy. I have a heavy feeling about the end of this year. I know that God doesn't play games. Okay, so I have to agree that something is going to happen this September. Now, do I know positively that something is going to happen? Well, in my heart of hearts, I feel that the Holy Spirit would say yes inside of me. However, I've been given no particular prophecy or vision about this September other than my dreams about storms and flooding have started again. I've been having those dreams, very real ones. I had a dream just the other night that was so real. There were storms everywhere. Some decision had been made by Obama. Um, there was all sorts of, of hell and chaos, and people were lined up rioting. There were ringleaders trying to lead these riots. Um, many people were getting the heck out, and there was traffic jams everywhere. There was a baby with a soiled diaper, and the mother could not give the baby a clean diaper because there was none to be had. Um, so I've been having these dreams again. So heads up, things are happening quickly. Yesterday's events could be a, um, a sign for us of the greater things that are happening. Let's all be uh, prayerful, watchful, and be prepared. Thanks, and God bless you.